Hey everybody, and welcome back to Etherfields, where it's our final thoughts of the game. We've just finished playing through the entire Deck. T of the, the prototype we've Deck. got. Yep. The first three scenes of chapter three of the game. And, uh, yeah. And we've had a full-on adventure. We have. And now we're going to talk about awake. what we thought about it. Well, our, unfortunately, these characters, these prototype characters, only exist in a section of a story. And if you want to know how that story begins and ends, you'll have to back the Kick Etherfields on Kickstarter. <laughs> On the 16th of July. Which may or may not be around the time this video is released. Dream laughter, kids. <laughs> oh god, it's the malicious child. The malicious child is back! <laughs> Crap! She's mad because we never drew her from the deck. It's like American Horror Story. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, why don't we start with Ollie? Because he was the most frustrated that we wouldn't let him be more nah. destructive in his dreams. <laughs> Literally, I was tough guy. I was red. I had hate, which lets me use it. Literally, I had... The mask lets me use something for Wrath. I had a card that let me use the other resource for Wrath. And you didn't let me kill things. Also, I'm slightly more annoyed that I spent an ether to lose a power before using it. That was dumb. I uh, I I did find yeah. actually that I made a few silly mistakes with the hand management system where I'd yeah. like instead I just I'd spend a card realizing that with uh, realizing that I could have prepped it and spent a different card and yeah. managed it a bit more efficiently. But maybe that's just yeah um, getting to know how the game plays. Do you do you like this? I, I feel that this is a me mechanic um, that is used in other games quite. Yeah, I mean this yeah. is this is pretty basic uh, deck building and yeah. hand management. I mean, I I actually I really like the idea of the masks and the I, I I'm not entirely sure if the players are that different. I think there's a slight dip in favor of the color that you are. I won I would I wonder not, if we would have noticed more distinction between the characters if we'd started from the beginning of the game. Yeah, yeah. but I'm I'm, um, I'm curious if about more that. refined because we didn't use but, really uh, any of our special abilities. Well, I tried to, and you stopped me. <laughs> Twice. Just to be clear, guys, in case you missed all of our gameplay videos, you should Boom. go back and check them out. But if you haven't, then um, this is a fully cooperative ad adventure game set in a dream world where we're sort of going through story-based scenes and also wandering around a world, mm -hmm. encountering dangerous beasts and stuff like that. And sometimes these crazy creatures here show up and we have encounters with them which may or may not be friendly or violent. Yes. Talk to me. Mm -hmm. I'll make it difficult. <laughs> mm. I no. yeah. I I I like the masks. You um, like the masks? Yeah, but I I it took me quite a while to realize how good this was. You may discard up to two cards from your hand to draw the same number of cards in the draw phase. So instead of having to go, oh, I need three of a kind of power, I could have just ditched cards that were useless. Uh, it took me a long time to figure out that was good. Right. Yeah. So the, I mean, what that does is it basically allows you to do because you can when you draw cards at the beginning of your turn, you can burn them to draw more card. Yeah. Or you can draw a card you have left over from last turn. Yeah. But this allows you to sort of... Um, so you'll cycle the deck faster. Yeah. But you can really, like, sort of tailor your hand towards the, the mm. resources you need. But also on the first turn where I draw seven cards, that means I could, I could not spend any of them and still draw cards. So if I had stuff that I wanted to keep... Right, you could not spend any of them and then discard two and draw two. Yeah. Which, yeah. not necessarily useful, but if you're, if you're holding on to something going, I want most of these and these two cards I can discard, that's two turns of having seven cards. Mm -hmm. Well, the biggest challenge we faced over everything in the game is having the resources we need to pay for the thing. The things. correct resources for the correct, correct thing. Exactly. Um, to sort of follow the path we want. Yes. And the... the I think there is here a really solid sort of proof of concept um, in terms of how it's going to function, how you're going to unlock things, how you're going to manage these hands, and all that kind of stuff. Very interestingly, I, I always felt sort of... There were definitely points during the library and the mill mm. where I felt threatened and under pressure to achieve something. Yes. But then when we finished it, I was quite surprised how well we had done. Yes. Like, if you remember... It felt slightly anticlimactic once we achieved them. Well, and I, what I was going to say, actually, about that was that... 
Um, it's actually on the intro card is the reward you get for finishing. But what there isn't is any text that sort of tells you what happens. Yeah. yeah. And I really feel that's missing because there's all this cool text setting the scene. Agree. All of this cool text that comes out during the adventure. And then when you're done, it's like, here's so a what? key and an yeah. item or something, you know? And what it doesn't... Keys do? And actually, I think that comes back to the fact that the most engaging thing about this, much like Tainted Grail and also this War of Mine, the uh, another Awakened Realms game, is the story. You know, and this is going to... I mean, this hand management stuff and... Um, the deck building stuff is fine. Mm. It's not revolutionary, but it's functional. Free, it does the job, the yeah. and it, it it gives you an interesting puzzle to solve frequently. What uh, I'm and I do I do worry that it might get tiresome, but hopefully there will be enough interesting cards going on here and elements going on that will keep it interesting. But honestly, this is going to live and die by the quality of the story, mm. and I found the story very compelling. I but, found it very engaging. I, yeah. But, but I agree with you. It's like it felt like some of it was missing. Yeah, it, it just needs some I mean, end end scene text yeah, to explain these, what's going on. These big story scenes need end of scene text. You know, maybe even uh, a few of them based on what yeah happened. You know, I mean, like if you blew up the mill. You know, I I I don't want to have the same victory text if I saved the mill and blew up the mill. Yeah, I want to feel like that different. choice made a difference. Mm. But I'm not convinced it did because th- although. By not blowing up the mill, you know, maybe we kept the director around. That allowed us to unlock the basement path and get through here. You know, and it was a lot cheaper to do it. And it was maybe, yeah, and it was a lot cheaper to do it because we found the map of the swamp, you know. Uh, maybe, you know, we don't know, but what, uh, what I mean, what I would like to see is sort of consequences of these actions. E- if it's just read ending A, if you did it this way, read ending B, if you did it that way, that would be enough. But even if it was like shuffle more cards in here or in there, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, based on what uh, choice you what pick, choice so, you made so it might have ramifications scene. further down the road. Yeah. That would be. And I liked the idea that if we blew up the mill and then failed the scene and had to come back later, it would still be blown up. I like the idea that there were those lasting consequences on the world, and the game is obviously set up and robust enough to have a way of implementing those. Yes. So I'd really like to see that used often. Just on the, on the subject of the story, I liked these cards that came out. And we, we had this mm. from the very beginning, this wisdom card, Signs. Right, to and match that, up the symbols. Yeah. That made us overly paranoid about... Well, it made me overly paranoid. <laughs> it made us overly attentive to the artwork, which was great. That's but the art is really, art. really good. But that was yeah. a great idea, because we mm. kept finding them like randomly. Oh, were there any little numbers that we missed? <laughs> now we'll all just sit and stare at no, the no. Uh, But also, exactly. and this, this is the thing... This was the hook that I was kind of... I was half hoping it would be the rest of the demo, but I'm pretty sure it's not for a reason. The first omen. Again, these flowers, implying we've seen them before. Mm-hmm. And that, that is... the flowers from the car. Yeah. Well, this came but, out, I think, during the car, right? Yeah, yeah. But that's the, that's the thing, isn't mm-hmm. it? It's Something's going on here, and this is the first mm-hmm. omen. So there's a yeah. second omen. There's a, And whatever that is, I want to know what's going on, because yeah. it's kind of eerie. Mm. All we really know, I mean, and this is sort of meta knowledge, not purely from this adventure, is that these strange flowers are appearing in the dream realm, mm. and they're somehow connected to the ether fields, which is where I guess you're ultimately trying to go. I don't, we don't really know, yeah. no. but I, I, it's, it's, it's. I mean, I, I assume something's there. A weird and wonderful enough world that I want to find out what that is. Yeah, and I've enjoyed going on this adventure so far. I like that, for example, like this scene. Uh, even though it uses an entity card, has no actual sort of combat. You know, yeah. and I understand if you're the combat character, that kind of puts you on the backseat a little bit for this one. Yeah. But I like that there is diversity in the scenes and different options, mm. and it also offers you some different paths as well. Well, it's yeah. it's actually, like, I, I know I got a, screwed over by it because a lot of my cards didn't do anything, but that's kind of how I built my deck, to over-specialize and... If we could have solved every problem by me just killing stuff, that would have been boring. Yeah, it wouldn't have been interesting. Yeah. It would have been fun for about five minutes, and then it would have just been like, oh, um, yeah, I murdered it. Where you excel is in the uh, the, uh, the random encounters with lots of these little entities yeah. showing up and, yeah. and causing and, us havoc. But that's that's the thing. I, I like the fact that there's a, a balance between what you're going to do, mm. because otherwise it would become very one-dimensional. So... Even though, like, I am arguing the point in some of the episodes, mm-hmm. I, I don't think that's a bad thing because it stops one person basically carrying the game, mm. or it stops everyone having to invest in the same skills and having to fight for resources. Yeah. We we didn't 
I mean, I specialised in red because I just kind of doubled, like the mask sold me on it. Mm. But I could easily have gone another way. If I'd have had a different mask, I, prob- I probably might have. Maybe, but I think you need, I think you need a balance of all three. Yes. But the, the fact that you went, well, I'm the green guy, so I'll have the green cards. And you went, oh, I'm the yellow guy, so I'll have some of the yellow cards. And mm. you still had some green and some other stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the common voice thing. That was a great card to pull. That was very lucky that, was that I got awesome. that. Yeah, that was super lucky. But I think, and but I think the other thing, uh, but and and I find I think that that we didn't get to do a lot of the sort of deck building aspect of the game because yeah. we because skipped the first chapter yeah, and we're sort exactly. of dropped yeah. in. But uh, I like the idea of sort of building out this deck, and I hope there are sort of slightly more things you can do with it. Um, but I I do like as well that you can spend three resources to draw a card. So even if you've got nothing but red in your hand, you can at least mitigate you can cycle. that. It's not efficient, and it's going to cost you because cycling costs you. Yeah. But at, at least you're not completely helpless, right? Yeah. yeah, you don't have to just miss a turn, which is the worst. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. Just re- remembering you can do that because yeah. I mean I know like pre Kickstarter prototype, some of the rules weren't that clear, <laughs> which I hope they improve because there's a lot of stuff where we're reading it and we're going, does that mean what I think it means or does that mean something else? Oh yeah, and I mean we we had to do quite a bit of work to decipher well, these rules, but the, that's fine. yeah. But the, the library is my example. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had yeah. a bit of a so there was a there was a there was a sort of a a, a, snafu. a slightly unintuitive way of laying out um, a it took us some of the intro cards have uh, actions written on the like this scene has a special action in it, but it doesn't and it's, tell it's you a little way. unclear when that action comes into effect. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure that'll be tidied up. Like I said, I think yeah, that kind of yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. Like it's it's a fairly, well, it will definitely be tidied up because we've mentioned it in our videos, which Awaken Realms watch and pay scrupulous attention to, right? Michael, you were saying before we interrupted you repeatedly. <laughs> what? You were. You no, were he was just echoing. agreeing. With I was me. just agreeing. Oh, okay. I, I was like, oh crap! I keep talking over him. No, no. Uh, mm. Okay. I didn't think that earlier at all. Oh, good. <laughs> did you enjoy this romp, Michael? I did. I enjoyed it a lot. Did you enjoy how the cards come out? Where they don't, where they line up perfectly on the artwork. This really pleases me. This this made me. I there and actually that was one. Sorry, before you dive in, yeah. um, <laughs> there was just one more thing I wanted to say was, uh, and this comes back to uh, like for example the use of these symbols to find little like things that. and trinkets. I love I'm, all the different things. And uh, I really liked how they used all the little. I, li- I really like the clever use of the cards and the components. So you know, much like in uh, Seventh Continent, there was sort of hidden numbers and things. Um, and I really like the way the balloon card allows you to sail between locations by the length of the card. So you take the card and you start putting it down here to try and figure out where you it can was, go. Was, uh, that kind of clever use of the components correct. was really, really nice and really helped to immerse me in the game. I, I enjoyed that a lot. And even just this kind of our use of the art on these cards. Yeah. Um, I really like that. Me too. I, it, I was literally just going to say the exact same thing. It, it, this That's the one thing that I compelled me about it a lot i really like how it, it, like you said the, the 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 game the puzzles within the puzzles type thing the yeah. game within the game like trying to find those secret symbols and trying to find the it's always saying your experience is is enhanced or potentially um uh screwed over screwed over yeah by the amount of attention that you put, the attention to detail. Yeah. But um, what I particularly liked about it is that, um, for example, the stairs card I got from the library, which yeah. was really useful, not just in the library, but ongoing forever, and now is a part of my deck. I've got this ongoing reward from that little moment. But actually, I prefer that to the way it's handled in Seventh Continent, where it's often requiring you to spot these things, or else you can't progress. Yeah. And I find that kind of frustrating because... It, some some of them are really hard to spot, and I have been playing Seventh Continent and staring at the board for hours on end, trying to spot this thing, and eventually I spot it, and I go, okay, well that was dumb. Not, that was dumb. Whereas on this, because it's not a requirement, but it's a little nice reward, mm-hmm. that feels much better. Because no, I agree. You know, if I don't if I don't see it, I don't know what I've missed, right? Yeah. And I'll never know. But if I do see it, I feel clever for the rest of the game because that card's in my deck now. Yeah. My only. I'm determined to find this last one. <laughs> Just, just me personally. It's my OCD, but this being at a wonky angle really. See, the funny me. thing is, I like that because I actually like that too. I, I like it because when when I saw the deck go out, I was like, right, it's just this size card can be the only thing that changes the landscape. Mm. This threw me a lot when it's like pull this secret card in. It's a small one, and you think, oh, it's gonna be crap. Oh my god, it's just given us a secret tunnel. Yeah, exactly. I and I really I I like how they use it as, at a wonky angle because it means that. In a adds weird kind of fun. way, it adds. You never kind of know what to expect from these cards. You know, yeah, you never really know what they're going to add. 
You know, because they could be an item, they could be a card for your deck, they could yeah. be extra locations on the board. And that's that's really good because you know, if they were all the same size, you would kind of sort of have this meta idea about what they yeah. might be. Like if, if they had to be that way, then you know it can only, only ever go down because it would be that and that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I mean, was... I guess there, there's, there might be a clever way around that. No, no, no. But, but I appreciate But the, what yeah, I mean yeah, is yeah, by, yeah. by having it at the off angle, they can yeah. cover more space. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you, you just don't know. You know, it might just be like one little uh, tip that touches and then this huge sort of piece of artwork down here and you don't yeah. know the scope of what's going to open up yeah, and mm -hmm. yeah I, absolutely I think that was a deliberate decision on their part and I, mm. I quite like it mm -hmm. yeah well it all helps to sort of enhance this um, this sort of feeling of being in the dream realm and everything being a bit weird okay. and a bit unexpected you know um, and I like that I, th I think it captures that sort of sense of being in an unreality quite well mm. um, I, I I I yeah I this words. I wish, I wish there was a bit more going on with this. But the, the one thing I will say, not for lack of trying on my part, getting that power to mm. do something, mm. we didn't really but use it. I think there's going to be more characters, isn't there? Oh yeah, there's. there's oh a, yeah, yeah. There's, they've they've shown four off. We've only got three. I know, but what I meant was we didn't actually use our character yeah. character power. Oh, I think I used mine like one time. Yeah, and I I, I tried and all. got outvoted, but. What, what was your one, even? I don't uh, that I spent two green to unflip one of these. Right. Which is particularly useful if you fill your deck full of cards that you flip. But some of these prepped cards that you prep at the bottom of your deck... Okay, like, like rapid progression. Yeah, exactly. So you flip that to spend six to buy a new card, and then yeah. Michael can flip it back up. Well, yeah. the dodge card's a really good example if you can find that one. Yeah. Because you flip it to do a dodge, and then it stays face down in front of you. Yeah, but that's, then... that's what I mean. Like, if, if there's a, a card he had, especially if it was worth green as well... Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. There's the dodge card, and actually one I also really liked uh, like the tactics card I have, and also the stairs card, which have these abilities where you pay, f you prepare the card, you pay for the ability, and then so long as you've marked the card, you know it will stay. Like this one, for example, you activate this card, and then at the end of the scene, the mm. mark goes away. With the stairs, the mark stays there forever until I discard the card for whatever reason. Yeah, and I really like that kind of idea of building up sort of like a. Um, uh, a, a bunch of powers down here mm. you know and it sort of makes the, the sense of dying a bit more dramatic dramatic yeah because you're going to lose all of that yeah but the, again though I love the fact that a party wipe mechanic in this doesn't actually end the adventure for you yeah. because we've, we've played games with a murderous level of difficulty mm -hmm. and some of them we have scraped through by the skin mm -hmm. of someone else's teeth tainted grail mm -hmm. I'm looking at you well, well, I, again, Tainted Grail and to an uh, to an extent Seventh Continent. I found yeah. this a lot. I don't want to say easier, more but forgiving. Uh, and I know it's only a prototype, uh, mm. the Kickstarter um, early edition, but it it felt like it didn't feel as punishing. Yeah. Well, it's, and that's the thing about Seventh Continent is that um, when you fail out of Seventh Continent and also Tainted Grail, I think you basically have to start all over, and that worries me deeply hmm. i'm also concerned on the flip side though that uh this might not feel punishing enough when you die like enough to create a big threat yeah. well the, um because it puts what it does is it just kind of double retards your progress because you lose all your active cards and then you have to put a bad card in your deck which you have to pay ether to get rid of yeah but and if you get stuck on something you might wind up getting into a situation where your deck is so bad you're not enjoying the game anymore mm. And that I find worrying, but, you know, I trust that... Uh, Actually, no, because these are all one time. What I mean is these these ones, we didn't actually have these come out because we, well, we didn't need to. We thought we were going to at one point, but mm. they're, they're not as game-destroying as I think we were worried oh, about. Oh, look at that, and then discard yeah, this then card. Discard the card. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, okay. and that's that's the thing. It's you're not, You'll are not you be stuck for an encounter when you mm. have to use it, mm. yeah. and it will do you in, but... We were a lot. We were very worried when we started of how we were going to heal because there was only one spot to heal, and then we figured out we can use the train station to get back to the awakening. Yeah, and that that went from us going, "We're going to die," yeah. to, "Oh my god, we can heal." Yes, it's taking us longer now. And we're going to end up having to cycle the deck again potentially, but I like the fact that they've worked that mechanic in because yeah. as as fun as it can be to have a game where it's all or nothing, it can also be incredibly frustrating if you mess something up by mm. one tiny. Yeah, twist of fate, and then you just like right uh, mm -hmm. start over. That that can be a table flip moment. 
Well, so, I'm, and I'm very reticent to sort of say this is the right way to do it. Or, no, this no, is no. good. This is bad. And I'm I'm reticent because I know it's so difficult to balance yeah. the find the right balance between having a significant sense of threat yeah. and having a overly punishing mechanism that just spoils the game for you. Yeah, but I'm, I'm personally on the side of I'm playing a game to enjoy the journey with my friends yeah. or these two. <laughs> or yeah. these two. <laughs> we, that's yeah. <laughs> but it's so for for me it's is frustrating <laughs> when a game ends. <laughs> It's it's frustrating when a game just ends and it's like right, we we failed, we screwed up. If we ever want to do this again, we've got to start all the way over because mm. a lot of the time we don't have the time to do that. Mm. So I I can see the I can see why some people like those games. I'm not overly mm. I I wouldn't go out of my way to play one of those if I knew it was going to be a heavy time investment mm-hmm. because mm. I would end up doing something stupid and annoying myself into sulking. <laughs> I, I know this. I know this. You've probably seen this. Where it's like Ollie's done something stupid. He's really annoyed, but he's annoyed at himself, so he can't shout at someone. And yeah. and I, I I like that they've that I've they've never done, done that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Quick, yeah. Jiminy, tell him not to lie. Yeah. Too late. <laughs> and but, uh, I, I just I do really like the the sort of the art and aesthetics. Yeah. These giant miniatures are, compl- and I do think uh, I I, th- I think regarding the giant miniatures, these are incredible sculpts. They're yeah. really wonderful. This game is a great excuse to make these beautiful beautiful models, which yeah. Awaken Realms are so good at. Yeah. Just... I do wonder if it if people are going to resent having to pay for these. Why? Because they could just be cardboard standees. Yeah, but you could also be like, well, you could just play chess out of a board that you drew in the sand. Yeah, but that was different, right? If people are coming to this for the story and they're paying a lot of models, a lot of money for these big models. Okay. I mean, that you might not necessarily. I'm, well, I'm I'm not gonna lie. Like, yes, you could say they don't have to be in there. However, the artwork doesn't have to be in there. Use your imagination. Yeah, you, and that's a it, fair point, Ollie. It's a it fair could, point. It could be a booklet, and it could go through it. You. The components can help in, intensify and enhance the experience. Yeah, and when this guy shows up, it does really intensify the experience. <laughs> yeah, the experience of a brown trouser moment. Yeah. <laughs> when that thing came out, we're like, oh, Hello. crap. Hello, giant lady. This is either someone's worst nightmare or fetish. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> or both. Or both. Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, I think we've run out of things to say. <laughs> Let's see if so, this one keeps about dream fetishes. Um, I really hope that this uh, this has given you guys some uh, useful insight into how this game works. There is a lot more beautiful stuff coming. I think this I, this symbol up here, which is going to be part used for the, the, the part of the player boards, yeah, is um, sh- it shows you just how sort of much investment in the aesthetic of this game Awaken Realms intend to make. So this is very much a rough version of what to expect. I imagine you'll be seeing a lot, a lot, a lot more cards available for this game as well. So Mm -hmm. if this story is something that intrigues you, then uh, this is on Kickstarter now. And I can only hope that we have been informative in helping you decide if that's something you want to get involved in. Mm -hmm. And also entertaining. Hopefully we provided some entertainment value as well. So thank you very much for coming on this journey with us, guys. And we'll see you in the next adventure. Bye! See you, Dave. Bye. Did you do it? What did I do? Uh, Bad Terry? <laughs> He's oh, still God. asleep. Michael, let's make his mind up. in the dream world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wake up! Let's sleep, let's sleep.